fantastic. Right, I think we will get going. I'm just going to do a brief overview again. I'm sorry for those of you that I am um, I am remote. I'm having to sort of repeat myself for those of you that came early. Good afternoon, and my name is Laura Hodgkiss. Um, I'm the event and training team leader here at Staffordshire Chamber of Commerce. We're delighted to have you tonight um, as our attendees for this webinar. For those of you that don't know, we are recording it tonight, so just bear that in mind, but we cannot see or hear you, so we cannot see you at all. So if you want to get up from the session at any point and grab a tea or a coffee, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, you can speak to us tonight by the chat function, which should be at the bottom of your screen or usually at the top of your screen. Um, and you can raise your hand at any point during the interactive parts of the sessions as well um, should you wish uh, to make a comment or to ask a question live to um, to our speakers as well tonight and um, with all that said and done Neil it is over to you okay thank you very much and good evening everybody hope you're all well on this summer's evening I'd like to welcome you all to this marketing for success webinar brought to you from the painting and decorating association working in partnership with Staffordshire Chambers of Commerce Growth Club. I'd like to introduce a few people you can see there on the screen. We have Jane Shepherd, the PR Director from the PDA's public relations company, Shepherd PR. We have Laura Hutchkiss, Events and Training Team Leader from Staffordshire Chambers of Commerce Growth Club. And of course, leading tonight's webinar and helping to keep me in check, and also from Staffordshire Chambers of Commerce Growth Club, I'd like to introduce their market advisor, Fiona Miller. Now, Fiona's role is helping businesses to define their marketing strategy, increasing their turnover and return on investment. She has over 15 years of experience in marketing and business growth from a strategy for planning and execution. As she will tell you, marketing can feel like a minefield at the best of times. You don't have to be an expert to really make a difference but you do need to understand where to spend both your time and investment to work towards matching your market plan to your business goals. This session will be really informal, but very interactive with you. The participants are encouraged to share in part at certain sectors of the actual event with thoughts and questions added as you've been told to add them on the box at the bottom. This will help Fiona and Laura to shape the content of the webinar and to ensure that we achieve a better understanding of it at the end. For those who have not taken it all fully on board this evening, as Laura said, we are recording the session and this will be available to share with you from next time, this time next week. We are really grateful to Stoke on Trent, Staffordshire Growth Club and the Chambers for providing this training session. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. I'm Neil Ogilvy, I'm the PDA's Chief Executive. Some of you maybe have spoken to me on the phone or you may have seen me in the Decorator magazine. So without further ado, I would now like to hand over to our marketing expertise for the evening. Over to you, Fiona, thank you. Thank you, Neil, and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. I know it's not always an easy decision to make of an evening when you've uh, had a full day's graft, but uh, I hope that by the end of the session, you'll feel that it was worth it. As everybody says, it's really informal, so we're gonna have some points throughout the session where you'll be able to interact with me if you've got a particular problem or a question that you want to ask, then we'll be able to do that. Most importantly, like I say, I know it's an evening, so I don't want to make it too hard and too heavy. I've deliberately kept it quite light, but if at any point you don't understand anything, there are no such thing as silly questions, so please pop them in the chat and we'll uh, hopefully get that sorted out for you. And I'd also like to thank as well um, the Painting and Decorating Association, thanking Neil and also Jane, the uh, PR Director, for arranging the session and inviting the Chambers and the Growth Hub to take part. It's an absolute honour. We are thrilled for the first time to be working with the Painting and Decorating Association and we hope that we can do your members some justice tonight and deliver some good content. And finally for the thank yous because we're getting on like the Oscars now. Um, also thanks to Laura from the Chamber for joining me on this session. We do quite a lot of these webinars. We've become a bit of a double act so Laura will be getting involved a little bit later to be my co-host and she'll be helping to ask the questions so thanks to everyone and again thanks to you at home let's get started so just to give you a bit of a background really um some of you may have heard of growth or some of you um, may not so 
growth hubs were put in place and they cover England. Now, every business in England, the area that they sit in is covered by a growth hub and they're actually provided by the government to give um, fully funded business support. So if you're not in my area, which is Staffordshire, you will have a growth hub that covers your area. If you need the support with anything from HR to marketing to finance to grants to business planning advice, then alongside, of course, your PDA membership, which offers you more sector specific, you can also engage with your local growth hub. And if you aren't based in England, there is a different business support out there that's also government funded. It is slightly different within Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, but there is still an equivalent. So please know that the government support is there for you to, to engage with as you, as you wish. And for me, most people seem to be surprised, including myself when I first joined, of what's actually available. Um, so do check that out. And also as well, you, you will have the Chambers of Commerce, which covers your area. So again, if you do feel that you want to reach out and network with more business professionals, for example, if you want to break into more commercial jobs and you feel that you'd like to increase your network in that area, then Chambers of Commerce will be absolutely perfect for you to do that. Again, as you can see there, you, you do have uh, many chambers around which cover all the uh, counties. So I won't go through side by side with what, what they offer, but if you do want to check that out in more detail, then you can always find that online. So that's the boring part out of the way. Let's get down to business and what we're here for. I know that some of the biggest barriers in marketing are around lack of understanding, confusion, a lack of time, budget issues and many, many more barriers which we all find when we're looking at marketing. So if you do agree with any or all of those, don't feel that you're alone, it's perfectly normal. As an advisor, I'm out speaking to businesses every single day um, and whether they are huge blue chip companies or whether they are one man bands, most people that I speak to have some lack of comfort zone around marketing. It just has become this mythical beast. I think the digital era really um, contributed to that. Whereas back in the day, you could stick your ad in the yellow pages and go off and do your work for the year. And we, we don't have that luxury anymore, but then also that represents more opportunity nowadays. So I understand that it can be confusing or you just don't have the time, but hopefully by the end of the session today, we'll work through some little hints and tips that will make you feel a lot better around all of those. So we're going to be covering the customer journey. Now, this is my favorite part of every time that I speak to businesses, I always bring the next slide up. And the reason for that is it's the one thing we always forget. So when we're marketing, we don't always look at how customers interact with that marketing. And hopefully when I do show you that slide, it will help you to understand how your marketing footprint all fits together. So we have, well, you might have a website, you might have social media, you might have a Google profile, and this will help you to join the dots. Uh, we're also then gonna look at making a plan. Um, I know that it's an evening, as I keep saying, so I'm not going to be too heavy on that, but hopefully by the end of the session, you'll have some easy tools that will enable you to put together a basic marketing plan and know why you're doing what you're doing. We'll have a brief overview of the website and what are some key areas to get right. And we will look at some tools on how we can help you deliver, to, deliver your marketing plan a little bit easier and a bit more time effective. And finally, that massive mythical beast itself, social media, we'll have the opportunity for you guys to fire some questions at me, any problems that you've been having. We'll have a bit of an overview of the networks and we'll also talk about the social media advertising in, in a light detail as well. So I hope that you're excited for the content. I hope that you're looking forward to um, taking some exciting things away with you. Again, as we keep saying, it's an interactive session. So during the session, you will see a slide that says interactive. When you see that one, I'll encourage everybody to communicate with us. You should have a Q&A box. You've also got a chat box as well. Whichever one you're more comfortable with, we usually keep it for the Q&A, but we won't go mad if you use the chat as well. Or if you want to speak on the microphone, you can press the raise hand button and Laura will bring you into live, talk, live chat with me and we'll do it that way.
So looking at the customer journey, as I mentioned a little while ago, when we first started marketing many years ago, and particularly when I started marketing um, when I was 19 and used to use the yellow page, pages to canvas businesses from, and it was literally the Bible, we didn't have the opportunities that we have now. We had maybe notice boards in shop windows, um, phone directories, word of mouth. But as we all know now, this digital element has allowed us to make, have a further reach than we've ever done. And it's also as well enabled us to interact instantly with our customers online. So I think there are a lot of benefits to it. But sometimes we get a little bit confused or bamboozled by what it all means and what we should be focusing our time on. So on this slide, you'll see the two colors. So the blue line is your business and the purple is any Thing that the customer does so what we want to do with our marketing is kick off the wiggly line which is what i call the customer journey now the little gray speech bubbles are any marketing that you do and somehow depending on what that marketing point is they will become aware of your business name whether that's because they've seen a social media post or even a friend's told them about it and if there's some interest there, and this is always key because they're already in the market knowing that they potentially want some decorating, then they will potentially show some interest in your business. And we can relate this back because we all do it. If you think back to the last time that you spent some time online, whether you're into Facebook or whether you Google things when you need to find them out, we all do this to some degree. And all of this whole element of the customer journey, we're looking to see does this business offer what I'm looking for? And can I trust them to deliver that? So whether you're buying uh, some household items that have just popped up on your news feed, or whether you're looking into tradesmen, or whether you want to make a, a big purchasing decision, to some degree, we all follow this journey. And that's because, as I say, we're trying to build trust and we're trying to work out if this is going to be a good company for us to fulfill our need so for example if i wanted to have some decorating done and of an evening i would know that at the back of my mind but of an evening i might be relaxing and scrolling through my news feed on facebook as we always do it's almost sellotape to us without noticing i potentially would see your social media post um i would see that on facebook because you've actually spent the time even though you've been really tired you've spent the time at the weekend to put some new photos on of befores and afters of jobs and then somebody who's already followed your page is friends with me and they've shared that because they're trying to help your business out so i'm a new customer or potential new customer i've seen that post i then it started to think actually that work looks really good and we'll talk about quality of photos later on in a bit more detail but you can see now why first impressions really count because i'm not engaged with your page yet but i know at the back of my mind because like we all have in lockdown we've spent a lot of time in the house and uh, i know that i need some decorating doing what i will do then if i like the look of your work on those images is probably go onto your Facebook account and look through more images because I want to build up a bigger picture. Is, is it a one-off good job or do you always deliver nice work? So I'll have a flick through the photos and I'll think, oh, actually, I'm going to follow this account. Now, what will probably happen there, and it happens whether, whether we're looking for a tradesman or we're looking for a dress or we're, or we're researching something, is I will probably have my attention taken away from that thought process. So I'll probably watch the television for a little while or I'll probably get on the phone to somebody. And this is why consistent posting is really important because what happens then is you don't know me yet, but I've followed your page. So if you then a bit later in the week put another job picture on, now I follow your page, that will go back in my news feed and it'll jog my memory to remember, ah, I was looking at this the other day and it looked really good. I must get around to contacting them. And that point in time when I've seen that extra post you've put out, I've got a little bit more time on my hands. So I'm actually able then to do a little bit more digging. Now, what we probably do is type the business address into Google. And then, as you know, we can see reviews. and hopefully you've got some nice five-star reviews so this is still a customer journey which is really positive 
And then also as well, being as I've got a bit more time and I'm really interested, I want to know if your services are going to match what I'm looking for because I don't want a job as big as the one I've seen in the picture. I want to see if you do smaller jobs like painting my hallway. So I'll then go on the website. And now you might not have a website and you might be sat there at the moment at home tonight thinking, oh my goodness, I've, I haven't got one. And that's okay because luckily you a lot are in an industry where Facebook alone or LinkedIn alone sometimes is okay. It's enough. But if you have got a website, then of course this relates, um, relates to my current customer journey. If you didn't have a website, what would happen is I'd probably still Google the business and we can talk about how you can still have a presence on Google without having um, a website a little bit later. And then by this point in time, I think, you know what, I really, really like this company's work. And it's actually, it's, it's only four o'clock, so I'm going to send them a bit of a message and see if they're available and come and quote me for a job. So hopefully now, a little bit long-winded, but it just gives you an idea of how we interact um, and how every little, bit, every little bit of marketing that you do really helps. Because if you spend a couple of hours getting a website fresh, if you've got one, or if you spend a few hours over the month putting really nice pictures on your social media, it's really important to have that consistency because I will have my attention taken away from my journey and you need to bring it back. So hopefully that just explains a little bit more and makes it a bit clearer of how we all interact online. And I'm sure that a lot of you recognize that journey as well. So we're going to get down to making a plan now and I've tried deliberately tonight to not be too marketing because there are a lot of acronyms and tools and models and I find a little bit, some of them are a little bit too heavy. I find sometimes they can make us more confused than when we started. So I'm sure at some point you might have come across something called a SWOT analysis. It's absolutely fine if you haven't. Basically it just stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So we're able to split down the business to look at these four areas. And by doing that, what we'll come out with is a bit more of an understanding of where we're up to in this current moment in time. And these can be any, any area of the business. So I've put some examples there. So the team, the climate, so the pandemic that we're in at the minute would come into play there. The marketplace. Um, you know, the, the business itself. So anything that you feel, so what you would do there is you would just write down all the strengths you can think of and then any weaknesses that you have. And this is where it's acceptable to, to admit your weaknesses because this is only for you. This You won't put this live anywhere. Now you might spot some opportunities. For example, I can give you an, an easy one at the minute that we, like I say, we've all spent so much time in lockdown uh, and at home that we actually are investing in our homes a bit more. So I'm sure that you, many of you are feeling the effects of that and, and hopefully rushed off your feet. And then there are gonna be some threats. So that might be your competitors. It might be the fact that you're, you're worried about booking jobs in case we go in local lockdown. So anything like that, I'm gonna give you a little example now. So I just thought about a a potential um, painter and decorating business and the strength for me for this business was that they've been trading for many years that means they've got a good reputation because they've always looked after their customers and they have a medium-sized team but the weaknesses and it's okay if this is the same as yours would be is that they don't feel very confident with digital marketing. So they don't feel that their digital footprint, which we've just looked at on the customer journey slide, so their reviews and their social media posting and their website, because they haven't got one, they don't feel that it reflects the standard of work. The opportunities, as I've just said there, is that we've got more work available. Some people have been fortunate enough to save money from not spending on, um, on their leisure activities and, and they've spent more time at home, which gives us an opportunity for more work. And I'm sure that this one will ring true with many of you, that sometimes you're too busy to accommodate quotes and jobs. That might mean you lose business to competitors. And I do understand it must be so difficult. I was chatting to your CEO of the organisation, Neil, um, a couple of weeks ago and just 
really identifying with what a difficult job you have. Not only have you got a hands-on job that you have to go out and do the work and they can be really hard days and long hours, but you also have to do all the overseeing and the ordering and the business planning and running everything and going out to quotes. And I literally don't know where you find the time sometimes. So massive hats off to you. Um, and hopefully, as I've suggested, that we can find some ways to, to make marketing less of a headache than, you, than it is at the moment for you. So once we've done a SWOT analysis, and don't worry, because we will have an opportunity later to do some exercises for those who want to, um, we will actually um, look at 5W1H. Now, that sounds a little bit marketing and a bit geeky, but I'm sure we know the words what, who, why, when, where, how. This is a tool, it's one of my absolute favourites for marketing and many other business problems. It's used in universities, it's used in um, scientific research. So as basic as it is, it really has some, some really good uses. So what we're looking at when we're relating this to marketing is what are the products and services? Who are the target audience? Why are you doing the marketing? So what are the goals? When will you be doing the marketing? Where will you be doing the marketing? And how will you be marketing? So which, uh, sorry, which messaging are you going to use? Have you got a budget available? Or do you have any, research, uh, any resource? So is there somebody, hopefully you've got people that you can rope into to do a bit of social media and that sort of thing for you. So just going to leave that slide up a second just because it might be quite useful for you to jot down if anybody wants to. And just to let you all know as well, we're on about, we're just coming up to five to eight. We are going to have a bit of a comfort break at about quarter past eight, just depending where we're up to with the content. So if anybody needs to refill the glass, if it's a cup of tea or a thirsty Thursday, we'll have the opportunity coming up for that as well. So again, we can look at what are you offering, who are you targeting, why do you have the goals? when you're going to implement, where you're going to promote, and how you're going to go about it. So what we can actually do, if you remember the SWOT analysis that we just did, and I will quickly again, because I hover on that slide for very long, it literally is just strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So we did a SWOT analysis. We're now going to use that SWOT analysis to help us work out our what, who, why. Now, we know that we've got a, a medium-sized team, if you remember my example. So we want some larger scale projects to keep them busy. We really want to protect those jobs. We're going to aim at the domestic market because we know because of lockdown, they've got more time and those who have been fortunate have got more budget as well. We're going to... Um, the reason we're doing this is we want to generate a good income without too many quotes. Now, if you remember, and I'm just going to jump back, one of our um, threats on our SWOT analysis that we, we don't always have the time to do quotes. So now putting it back into the, into the why, we want to overcome that by going for the bigger jobs. And that means we're not always going to be out doing the quotes. It should hopefully help the time management. So we know we're coming up to the end of summer and we're going to be losing the light soon. So we want to get cracking from September. We're going to pop that on Facebook because we know we're aiming at the domestic market and most of those guys hang out on Facebook, which means that we'll be able to capture them there. And we're going to just, we have got a website because we're a medium sized firm. We're just going to put a little bit of attention on that. We might upload some new photos of recent jobs. And we're just going to check our Google My Business profile to make sure that's all tickety-boo as well. So the how, remember that that's our resource and method. So we're going to set the post up on Hootsuite. Now, I will go through Hootsuite with you and hopefully it will be a little bit of a dream for you all. Um, we're going to start a Facebook paid ads campaign because actually the Facebook, we've never really put time and attention to it. And there's only 70 people on there who like it. So... We know if we don't do a paid ads campaign, then we're probably not going to get seen by many people. Uh, we're going to just check on the Google listing and, like I say, update, update the website. And we're going to put some bigger jobs on there so that people identify with that's what we're looking for. 
So that was quite a big chunk of content. I'm not too sure. And the difficulty I've got tonight is that I can't see any of you. So I don't know if you're still with me or if it was too much, but please let's hear from you now. If you want to pop your questions or comments in the Q&A, if there's anything that you want me to go back to, or you've just got a, a, an observation, then we're just going to have a couple of minutes now for you to do that. So as I mentioned before, Laura and I have done quite a few of these webinars now under the Staffordshire Chambers and Growth Hub umbrella and um, she, she is my sidekick and uh, we've made a great double team so I want to keep her really busy in this section. So let's get those comment boxes really flooded. Come on then you members out, you members out there, you're not shy. There we go. There's one from Mark, Mark Parsons. Hello Mark. <coughs> Steve Trimble, yeah, hi Steve. And Mark, I can just see that you said, can you have a copy of the slides, um, which should be absolutely fine. Yeah, what I'll do, Mark, at the end of the session, you'll have my email address flashed up. So just ping me an email over if you like, and then I'll send you the slide deck straight over. I will also as well um, be sharing that with Neil to put on the um, PVA comms. And also again, next week we'll have a video. So you can either look at the slide deck or you can walk back with my comments. Please don't be shy guys if you want to ask a question in the Q&A, we're quite happy to take questions at any point, um, so just let us know. You'll also be pleased to know that we've got the heaviest content out of the way first, so we've done the planning, we're getting there, we're going to be looking at some fun stuff soon. A few chats coming in there now, Phil, I think. Dead cat. Hello, Dad. Good evening. There we go. Sure. Another one. Okay. There's a question in from David Borthwick as well there, and yeah. from um, I think I've just seen another one. David Borthwick's asking about LinkedIn, Fiona, and yes, Dad yes. about Google Business. Yeah. Fantastic. So we've got LinkedIn and Google Business are coming up shortly, um, and then what we'll do, we'll go through some of the, that content, and then we'll have another slide up like this again, and then if there's anything you still want to know, we can go through there. But if there is anything specific you want to ask in the meantime, that's absolutely fine as well. Yeah, so we are just getting quite um, a few questions just in there, Fiona. Just um, One's just asking if, if you do have to pay for Google Business. Uh, so at Google My Business is a free of charge profile. Um, Google's a very, very clever business model. It's probably been a marketer, one of my favorite business models in the world. So it makes the products and services really accessible and user friendly. What you, ha you do have the option to pay for then is the advertising. So you can pay for Google AdWords, but the profile itself is free. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, Mark, Mark's is more of a general question, so Mark's just asking if there's any tips for sending the right Facebook content. Absolutely, so we can look at that when we've got the Facebook coming up, but really for me, and I was, I've been thinking about this, this webinar's been planned for a couple of months now, and, and I like to put a lot of thought into, um, you know, hints and tips that are going to be helping you out for your sector. I think you're in a really lucky sector for marketing because a lot of what I'll tell you tonight, I wouldn't tell other sectors. They have to work a lot harder. I'll always say things like don't sell on social media, build up interaction slowly. I think because you've got such a desirable um, and, and needed service that you're able to just put some really nice pictures on and say something along the lines of another job just finished, get in touch for a quote. And that's enough. And relay it really to when you're on social media yourself, if you do use it, if you see other trades people, that's pretty much, regardless of the trade, all they need to do in order to, to, um, to get that engagement. Because I, as the potential customer, already know that I'm looking for your service at the back of my mind, um, the same as we do with anything we're looking for. So if, if you, that catches my eye, if it's got good imagery on, and you say that you're available for... Um, you know, a, a no obligation consult, uh, quotation, then I think that's, that's strong enough. It might be as well that your list services, 
or you give people ideas or you put trends and pantone palettes on there if you want to go a bit deeper with it but it, you can also keep it quite basic as well uh, thank you Fiona and um, David's just asking what are your thoughts um, on LinkedIn so my thoughts on LinkedIn is it David sorry Laura yes it was David yeah yeah so David LinkedIn is absolutely wonderful if you've got the right audience so it's it's one of my preferred platforms I mean I work a lot of b2b so I'm working with all the businesses generally speaking so LinkedIn's brilliant if you've got a commercial audience or that's where you want to align the business to. LinkedIn is a little bit trickier than Facebook because you are speaking with businesses so you can't be as quite as blatantly to be selling all the time and just putting loads of pictures on and, and offering free quotes. It does take a little bit longer because LinkedIn didn't used to be the way that it is right now. I mean, I think I've had my account for, eight, say, eight, ten years. And in the beginning, it was a massive novelty. So you could put what you like on there and people will contact you all the time. Unfortunately, it's become a bit of a victim of social spam. And there are certain businesses out there who've abused it now, which makes us all more cautious on LinkedIn. So as a general rule, we don't like to see posts that are selling. But you can, there's a way to get around that for your industry that if you just share really nice imagery um, that, and talk about the jobs that you've done, but really without pushing your services, then you can build up um, interest in a slow way and, and, and uh, just take a little bit more time to build the right relationships. And also as well, if I was in your sector and I was looking to break into commercial or I wanted to increase my commercial jobs, I would absolutely be hanging out on LinkedIn. It would be where I would build my network. But what I would do is write a hit list of businesses in my local area that I would absolutely love to work with. And then I would be slowly and very casually building a relationship with them and doing it that way. Because the beauty of LinkedIn is that you can find out the purchasing manager, you can find out the director's name. So if you've got those bigger companies that you're targeting and you really want that high, higher end work or, or the sort of more commercial work itself, then LinkedIn will be brilliant for that. And we'll cover that in a little, little bit more detail later. But again, happy to take more questions as we go through. Thank you. Uh, Fiona, a couple of other oh, I'm getting a bit of I apologise for online from my computer, so I'll just move back away from it. Sorry about that. Um, so Ben Taylor's just asked, um, hi, um, we have just had a website at the moment, so looking for tips to link it to social media and the best place to start. Fantastic, and congratulations on getting your website live. I know it's an absolute headache deciding what style to go for and what content to put on there, so well done for getting that far. Um, it's you can link your website on your social media profiles itself and you can also put a link back to it on your posts as well so social is a great tool for driving websites and we're going to look at google my business as well in a little while and that will help you to drive some traffic as well so it's a bit of a slow burn when you've got a new website because google is very cautious as a business google doesn't like to just uh, rank any site that's out there Google wants to make sure that your site's quality. So when you have a new site built, it just takes a little while for the Google back of house and uh, what they call spiders to go and crawl across the content and make sure that it's legit. So if I always say to anyone who's had a new website, that process can take six months, uh, sorry, six weeks up to three months. So if you don't feel that you're getting traffic, don't panic too early, but we'll show you some ways in a little while that we can drive some for you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Fiona. Um, we've also got some other questions, just more generic um, questions, really, that you might be able to answer um, once we get through the presentation. But I'll, I'll ask them now, just in case. And um, Nigel just asked, how do I create a Facebook business page? OK, Nigel, so we haven't got that content to that level of detail in the presentation, but I am more than happy to guide you through that process. So. What you'll need to do um, first off is to have a personal uh, profile, a personal Facebook account. So if you haven't got one of those, that will be your first place to set up. You can then create the business page and I'm happy to send you a step-by-step -step guide. What I will do at the end of the pre presentation, I've got my email address on. So if you just drop me an email reminding me what you're looking for, then I will make sure that I send you a really nice, easy to follow guide to setting that up. And I can coach you through that if you need me to. Hope that's okay. 
Fiona, that's amazing. Um, and just one, one more, and then we'll, we'll carry on with your presentation part. Um, so uh, Samantha just um, said, uh, when looking internally at our own business, I find it hard to determine the what, who, why, when, etc. And what would be the best way to do this? So, I mean, um, Samantha, are you talking about, uh, can I ask you what kind of business you've got first of all, Samantha? Is it? Ah, brilliant, fantastic. Fiona's just, she's brilliant. She's just moved back to the presentation slides. I don't know whether you can see that, Sam, Samantha. I can see I can see where you're coming from and I know sometimes Samantha when you're at the front at the coal face with your business it's really hard to take an objective view what I do and this might work for you or it doesn't when I feel that I'm having a bit of a block on planning because I can't put things on just under certain headers I take it back a step further I forget about these headers I get a big piece of paper and some jazzy colour pens because I'm old school and that's my favourite way to work and I just literally do a bit of a, what we have to call a thought shower now, because that's politically correct. I do a thought shower on that paper and everything about the business and the marketing and the good and the bad and the things that are happening that are out of my control and the things that I can control and the team. I just literally write them all over this big piece of paper. And then what we can do when we've done that, we can then start looking at the, at the headers and seeing if any of those things on the paper will match back into the headers. And I know that I've mentioned that technique to a few people and it does sometimes help to overcome the block. So if you're having a block when you've got headers there, get rid of the headers, just dump down everything in your mind about the business, the marketing, the current situation, the dream, the goals, the plans, and then fill it back into the headers. And I think that hopefully should clear the block down for you. Brilliant. Yeah, no, fantastic. I think that's it for the questions. Lovely. Well, we'll have a little, a little bit more and then we'll go through a quick comfort break. So let me just figure out. Yeah, that should be absolutely fine. So I'm just going to put this slide up for you again, a bit of a refresher. We're certainly not going to go over it in any detail, but I just want you to keep this customer journey in your mind at all times as we move through. And now we're going to have a quick look at some websites as well. So I'm just going to pop this light on and see if it helps because we're... Uh, evening session so we're losing the light of it now which i know everyone on, on this uh, webinar today is familiar with the occupational hazard so okay websites then oh i'm sorry i'm just trying to minimize this blog right okay so the fundamentals of a website and the first thing i'll always say to a web anyone who's looking at reviewing their own website is check out the competitor's website. And it doesn't even have to be in, in your sector. It can be in the industry or it can just be any website in general and get a feel for why you like it and what books you. Now, it's all about the user experience. And by that, we mean silly little things of what happens when we go on Google or we go on websites that really annoy us and, and they're all the same. They, you know, they annoy us all the same. So that's things like broken links, or we're on our phone and we have to do this and pinch zoom and we can't get the information display because it's not fit in the phone properly. Or we try and click on um, gallery and there's no pictures in there. All these little things, not just for you with your business, but just in general, when we're using websites, really bug us. So it's just handy to keep that kind of experience in mind of what you like when you go on a website and what you don't like. And again, I know that there are going to be people here today at home who, who don't have a website. And I'm certainly not telling you tonight that you have to. As I said earlier, I think you've got a really lucky sector for marketing that you can, if you're very domestic focused, uh, I'll put that in as a caveat, that you really could get away with not having one. It's always going to be better with one, but it's really not going to be detrimental to your success in, in that term. So what we do, and remembering back to that customer journey, when we go on the website, we're trying to establish the skill, if we can trust you, and if you're going to be suitable for my job. So we want to think, will I be in good hands? Will you do what you say you can do? And will you be right for my job? So if you're doing a little website review, and I'm going to leave this slide up a second if you're still jotting things down. And again, as we say next week, it will be available for you to go back into. Um, just be mindful when you're reviewing your website of this journey that we take as possible customers. 
and see if your website answers those things. Now, when we're looking at experience, quality and fit, there are certain key areas in the website that we can help our potential customers find that information out for them. So we know they're going to be looking if we're experienced and skilled. Now, where can we put that? We can use the about us section and we can also use a case studies or a project or our work page. They're going to be looking for quality because they don't want to fork out if, we, if we're not going to get a nice job. And that's really easy to show them that in the photographs and testimonials page. And they're also going to be checking the fit, which you again can do in photographs and also in your service list. So for the experience element that they want to verify when they're looking at our website and we're going to use the about or section or if you might call that who we are, it's good to put in how long the business has been established if you feel that that goes in your, in your favour. If you feel that you've only just set up and you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine, but it will help as well. You know, how many jobs have you done? Have you got some record number that you've just completed your X number of jobs? That would be nice to put in there. Um, how long has the business been? Are you going to have been trading? So all these things, if you go back to the customer journey and we're thinking in our own lives about when we book new services, these are things that we naturally think and this is what your potential customers will be looking for. If you've got a project area or people call it our work or projects, case studies, portfolio, it's all interchangeable. That again is a real opportunity to demonstrate your experience. Um, you know, if you've got any difficult or unusual jobs that you've ever overcome that were, you know, you've, you've had to erect scaffolding to paint right at the top of somewhere really, really tall, anything like that, that you can show your skill set will be really useful. Now, in order to make sure that the customer knows they're going to get quality, really photographs are key. It's true in this case with the old cliche that a picture speaks a thousand words. So if you've got a really nice bank of images, it's great to put them on. If they're not that brilliant, then less is more. If you're sitting there tonight thinking, oh my goodness, I always forget to take photographs because I'm just, the job's done and that's that, or you forget to take a before picture, just try and make it a good habit to get into because in your industry, photographs sell. And again, whether, the, whether your target audience base is consumers or it's commercial, photographs really are the key to you winning more business. Uh, again, testimonials, so many of you will be in a good habit with this. If you've got some customers who are absolutely lovely with you and you just know they're the kind of customers you'd be happy to put a bit of time into a testimonial, definitely ask for that as well because actually, we can say how good we are on our own website until the cows come home, but one person saying how brilliant we are or five people saying how brilliant we are, who are we going to believe more? So that's why the beauty of testimonials, they are really, really strong. It's basically the digital equivalent of the old word of mouth. And also the fit, so we're having photographs and service lists um, will help potential customers to see if you are the right company for their job. So for example, if you're only gonna be specializing in commercial work then, and they wanted their whole painting, then you're not gonna be for them. So it's a really good way in your service list to help a customer before they contact you, just to know that you're the right fit for them. So again, I know that was a bit speedy, just to recap, if you wanna jot a few things down. What are we checking for? We're looking, it's easy to navigate. It's got all the information we're looking for and it's a good user experience. So there's no broken links on there. It's not clunky. I don't have to pinch zoom on my phone. And the six things that we're looking to assess that are all interchangeable is the skill set, trust, suitability, for my work that I want doing, your experience, the quality of your work and the fit to my job. So literally that is what we go on websites for. And I know that they're all thinking all dancing websites out there, no matter what the service is, what the product is, it all comes back down to these fundamentals. The only main reason we go on a website for the first instance is to check these things out. So if we can tick these boxes, we're gonna have happy potential customers. 
who are more likely to book us for the job. So I'm just very quickly going to load up um, an example and we're going to check out if this has got what we're looking for. So I'm just checking in that you can hopefully still see my screen. Um, I'm just going to wait for confirmation back from the panellists to make sure that's happening because I don't want to be chit-chatting away when you can't see it. Okay, so as you can see on this screen, hopefully, that um, this is a nice looking website. It's got a really smart job in the background. It looks Fiona. Yeah. Sorry to stop you. Uh, we can't actually see that. You might need to just, um, uh, okay. I just thought I could leave it a couple of seconds just to see if it, <laughs> but it didn't, so. There we go. How are we doing now? Uh, perfect, thank you. There we go. This is why we have to, I have to have my sidekick, Laura, because I know that she'll always sort me out when we have a technical hitch. Thanks, Laura. So as you can see, this is, I mean, it's not in your sector, but again, it's service-based. So I thought it'd be quite a nice one for us to have a quick recce around. Really nice, fresh website. It's got the logo on it, very image led because service industries and the trades need that. So let's go on as if we're a potential customer. What we're going to be looking for? Well, we'll have a quick look at services because we want to see if they're going to be relevant for my job. And actually, I want some landscaping doing so I can see that there. They do that. Now, this, again, is a bigger website. So if yours is a lot more basic than that, that's absolutely fine. But this is really an all singing, all dancing one. So it gives you a good idea of the top. Now, we can go into all of those areas and we see, well, actually, yeah, I do want some new turf lanes so I could look in there. But first of all, I, I like looking at pictures because I don't want to waste my time in there if it's like the work. So now we just have a little load on the gallery. And can you see here that actually I didn't predict this, but it's a good thing to happen that I'm struggling to get on. Now, I don't know if that's my connection, but can you see where my user experience is compromised? And I worked with everybody at Blue Iris. They're, they're a previous client of mine, so that's something I can highlight to them tomorrow. But what we forget to do sometimes is be the customer and we forget to check in and just make sure everything's working at the front end. But if you see here on the About Us, can you see now we've got the testimonials page that we were looking for? We've got the case studies that we're looking for. So actually, we're able to go in there and see what kind of work they do. Um, we've, it's really nice and easy to navigate and um, we've got some pricing in there and also as well it's quite easy for me to contact somebody as well so it's a nice example and again we're looking for the service list we're looking for a gallery that works <laughs> we are looking for some information and if you see there, they've put awards. Now, if you remember, when we're looking for our service and we're on the website, I'm looking, can I trust this business? I'm looking, are they gonna do what they say they're gonna do? They've got awards shown on there. We won't go into the detail of the page, but really I'm sure that demonstrates their credibility. They've got case studies that are gonna tell me about real life jobs. They've got testimonials. I'm gonna be thinking right now, this looks like a really good company to work with. So now we'll have a little, uh, Technical hitch back to the PowerPoint. Wait a second. There we go. Are we back? I think we're on now. So I'm going to, uh, what time are we? So it's 20 past. I think we could do with a, a bit of a glass of water or a Thirsty Thursday drink or a copper. So I'm going to just have five minutes now. If everybody wants to just go take a quick comfort break and we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Fiona. Now, I know that I can't see you, but you can probably see me. So don't disappear, everybody. Stay exactly where you are. And as Fiona said, get yourself a drink. Have a comfort break, and we'll see you in a few moments. Cheers, Fiona. Thanks, Neil. We've got the exciting part coming up. We've got social media to go through. Uh, we've got the best part just in a second, some tools that are going to help us save time. So definitely stay tuned. I know it's getting late, and we're all probably very tired, but stick with us. We'll soon be done. 
So welcome back everybody. Hope you've got your drinks if, if that's what you've uh, been off to get. So we're going to move on now and we're going to have a little look at Google My Business. I'm sure that many of you have already got your profiles up and running. Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to mute some, move something. There we go. Um, so Google My Business is an absolute godsend for businesses who, um, you know, small to medium businesses. Google launched this a little while ago and it's an absolutely fantastic tool because not only does it give you some web presence that's better than it was when we had to rely on organic SEO ranking, which again is still important, but this is a quicker tool to get to the right hand side or the, the top of Google on a phone. So if I go and make a Google search because I'm looking for a paint or decorator, then actually you've got the opportunity to have your business name put in front of my uh, search and you don't have to pay for that. So how amazing is that? So if you've not got one or you haven't claimed the listing either, then definitely take this away with you because it really will. If you've got a nice social media presence, but you've not got a website, you can still get found on Google by doing this. So really, really key. So as you can see on the screen grabs there, you've what you will see, and hopefully you, you're all familiar with the way that this displays. It does display slightly different on a phone, but you still get the same information. So if I Google decorator soak, it brings up the one the decorators that um, that are on there. Now you can see that the middle one he doesn't um, sorry he doesn't have the direction set up. Now that basically means that he's not tinkered in with his listing. But there are all sorts of bits and pieces that you can add on here by amending your listing that make it easier for your potential customers as well. Now you can see there that the middle one doesn't have his address on there. There are ways for you if you've got a home based business and you don't want to publicize your address, there are ways that you can do that. And there's some great tutorials on Google My Business because we've got a short session tonight that we're not going to learn the ins and outs. What I'm going to do is show you how to set a profile up. And then once you go into it, there's some great tutorials on there that will show you what you need to do to make sure your listing's good enough. Now you'll see the stars and for me they're the favourite part of Google My Business. If I'm the customer and I'm on that customer journey and I do a quick Google search of your business name because I saw that on Facebook or LinkedIn if I'm commercial and then you come up with five gold stars next to your name. Now you just can't buy that kind of publicity and this is why it's really, really important to not only ask for testimonials of those happy customers but if you've got a little bit of time to send them a link to your Google profile and say, would you please leave me a review on here? It will mean so much to me. Now, if you can get five reviews or 10 reviews, not only will that look amazing to your potential new customers, but actually as well, Google will recognize your business that it's actually been well engaged with and well interacted with, and it will actually favor your listing and then enable it to go higher. So, the Google algorithm for being at the top of these listings is never published, but we can ascertain some things that we know that Google likes. Now, Google likes updated content on websites. So if you're going in regularly and refreshing your content and putting new pictures in the website and tinkering around with the information, Google likes that because it knows it's fresh. Google likes the businesses with reviews because it knows that the, the, the marketplace out there likes your product. Google also likes websites that have got social media widgets in there, which is just the link with your social media pages. And if you don't have that and you want that, that to happen and you're not too sure, then that's something your web developers can help you with. Because what you get there, if you remember that Google likes updated content, then actually what better way to put updated content in your website than your regular social media posts. So that's another tick for what I like to call Google juice. And the more Google juice you give yourself, the higher up the rankings you'll go. So if you have got a listing and you keep up to date with it, I do apologize if we're just gonna go over this, it's not gonna take too long, but very, very simply, all you need to do to get this profile is bring up a Google page. And as you can see there, type in Google My Business. It's that simple. What you then will see is this, which will be 
the first page where it says find and manage your business. So you can type your business name in. Now, there's sometimes some wizardry out there that actually they will have been content that you were on an old directory or you don't have a website, but you used to be on Yow. Google's very, very good at scraping information. So it might surprise you to find out that you've already got a profile and you just didn't realize. If you can't find your business, you'll see there, and this is Google all over. It's really nice and easy to use. It says there, can't find your business, add your business to Google. And then you just go through that process. The next screen then will be, once you've found the business, manage this business to reply to reviews, update your info and more. Now you'll see there my Gmail. And this is because if you want to do anything on Google, I always call your Gmail accounts your passport. So even if you use a business address for customers because you've got a website or you've got a Hotmail or a Yahoo or whatever else you're using, you'll need to set a Gmail account up first before you can use Google My Business. So if you haven't got a Gmail account, just reverse these steps, go back into your flat Google page and type in Gmail set an account up very very quick and easy the hardest thing is finding a name that's uh, that's available once you've got your gmail you then have to go into that inbox verify your email account by clicking a link and then you've got your google passport as i like to call it so then you'd click manage now so that really is as much as you need to, to know to claim your profile, you'll see on the right hand side that I've put the task or the toolbar that you'll see when you've got your Google profile. And you've got a reviews area, which means you can go in and reply to reviews, which is really nice. Google likes to see you replying and it also looks good for customer service as well. You've got the opportunity to add a web link if you've got a website, but Google hasn't picked that up. You've got the opportunity to update your photographs. So when you found your listing, it might just have one really naff photo on that's not of your business and it doesn't make sense why it's there. You can go into photos and you can amend that. So uh, you can also um, look at the products there. You can link things into that. So I've had, like I say, I've not got a massive amount of detail today on Google My Business just purely because of time. What I will say to you all on your Google My Business journey is that go and have a little tinker with it. Try these steps out. I'm just going to share my email address, as I've said before. Uh, just don't email the one on screen because I don't use that address for anything other than my uh, Google Passport, so I don't check that inbox. Um, but I'm happy to guide people through very much the same as setting up the Facebook account. I'll guide you through setting this up as well if you need that support. So please do email me. And we're going to look at something now that hopefully will be lovely for all of you who feel that you just don't have the time. So you want to be great on social media, but every night you get in, you forgot you haven't taught the picture or actually you've got no time and you try and do it on a Sunday afternoon, but you've got family commitments and these weeks just keep sliding by in all these different jobs that you're working on and you still haven't put your social media posts out there. So maybe one random Sunday afternoon, you'll fire a post out and then you won't put one out then for another three and a half weeks. And then sometimes it can go on for over a month. I get it. I understand. I already said earlier that I can't believe that, that the, um, the volume of work that some of you do, particularly when you don't have a massive amount of colleagues and resource on the team, that sometimes social media is just, well, you'd love to do it, but you don't have the time. Hootsuite, so for those who haven't heard of it, is a social media scheduling tool. All you need to do to find it is bring up a Google page and type in Hootsuite as I've spelled it there. You can sign up and what Hootsuite does is enable you to have, if you've got up to three social media accounts, so say you've got a business, Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook, for free you can link those up. And what you can do is schedule up to 30 messages across those networks. Now, it is a game changer. I run many social media accounts as well as the day job. I do lots of bits and pieces. And I tell you now, I could not do that without a scheduler. I really think if you haven't got one already, it will enable you to make social media a part of your business and it make it manageable as well. Um, as it says on screen now, there are professional plans available. 
if you're a bit of a stat junkie and you like nice reports or if you want to just schedule even more than 30 messages or put more accounts than three on you might find one of the professional plans a try but you certainly don't have to purchase them to be able to do the basics so what you'll get really is a screen that looks like this and i've got a few different hoops weeks set up i use one for growth hub that, I'm, that i run the social media for it's really really nice and simple to use so once you set it off and you've linked your profiles to it which it talks you through step by step because it wants to be user friendly it's designed for people with small businesses as well as bigger ones you can choose on the post section so post two you can pick the network so if you're going to do a post to your um domestic customers you just pick your facebook you put your text in if you scroll that wheel bar down you can drop your photographs in and then on the right hand side it comes up with this lovely preview you just keep tinkering back in on the left until you're happy with it and then you click now this is really important on hootsuite and i've learned it by my mistakes is if you post now you can't duplicate that content because it doesn't sit in your calendar. So always post schedule for later. So click the blue button first, choose a time, and then click the schedule. It will take once you've scheduled the date and it'll change that post now button to schedule. Click that, and then magically that post will then appear on that network at that time that you've chosen. So if you think about that, if you put a spare hour or two aside once you've got used to using this and how quick and easy it is you could schedule 20 to 30 posts in an hour or two with different jobs and different photographs and different messages and know that actually other than replying to inquiries that you get and comments that people leave your content's covered so if you can see how that can help you that you you know if you can just spare that time i really think that that would help you now i know we've had a question pop in so I don't know if you want to look at that for us, Laura, and then we'll move on to the final two. Or yeah, of course. Um, so we've got uh, Samantha just asking another question again. So we have um, Google My Business page and have switched on the messaging option. However, do not want to respond as all responses are sent as my personal account. Is there any way to change this? Do you know what, Samantha, it's a very good question and, and sometimes that just highlights, like I've just said with Hootsuite, I once pressed post now and it didn't work. We try these things and they don't work and previously Google was an absolute nightmare to try and get hold of anyone. Now I've got it on very good assurance and also I've tried it myself as well, but the Google help section is really, really good now. So if you can actually contact somebody at Google, so if you've already had a dig around and you can't find out where to do that, that the Google support function is really, really, really hot on. So I worked with a client a couple of weeks ago who had an, a different issue with her Google business page. So I suggested the same to her and she emailed me that day and said they've just come back and fixed it for me. So if you can't find it, definitely try there. If you're still struggling and you want to ping me an email just to see if I can have a bit of a dig around as well, then I'm more than happy. Um, I'll be completely honest off the top of my head, I haven't got the steps that you would need to follow. Um, but you, you can switch it on so you'll be able to switch it off somehow. So hopefully that'll help. But Google have got really friendly, which is nice. And again, going back to why I said that they're one of my favorite business models in the world for marketing, they knew that their game wasn't up because they would be too cloak and dagger. So they've put these customer service agents in, they've really sweetened up the deal for um, businesses because what does that do? It makes you think, oh, Google are really helpful. They help me with my business problem. And then you might spend more on Google AdWords. So it's, it's all, that's why I like it because it's all quite subliminal, but very, very clever. So I'm hoping, Samantha, that they'll sort that out for you, but definitely keep in touch with me if you can't, because I know that could be a bit of a nuisance. So final tool that we're gonna go on to is really quick and easy, but sometimes you might want some stock photos. So if you've been putting out reams and reams of job pictures, but you just wanna mix your feed up. So for example, you want some content, we're just gonna be coming into autumn soon, which means that the palettes will change. Everyone's gonna be into the rusty colors, or we might wanna put things with autumn leaves. You will probably know that if you go onto Google and just found an image on Google that wasn't yours, that you could get in trouble if you put that on your social media or your website because you don't have the royalty to it. 
to Unsplash. And again, if you see, you could just go on Google and type in Unsplash. Unsplash is royalty free images. And that means that you can download them and you can use them on your social media networks and your website completely for free and not get in trouble. So this is a very, very rare tool because there are not many of these out there for free, but could be really nice for you if you're struggling with content and you want to put some different seasonal trends on, or if you want some lifestyle looking images that are going to just jazz your feed up a little bit, then Unsplash is going to be your friend. So as you can see, you just pulled up, and this was with the help of our lovely uh, PR director, Jane, who found these beautiful images for us, but she's got a great eye. Uh, Neil also as well likes these images. We have uh, pulled those off on Splash, and if you can imagine now, particularly with the orangey one, with all the earthy tones and the wood, how on trend that is, how nice will these type of images look as a sort of background to your website? or as uh, peppered throughout your social media if you're talking about trends or you're talking about style. So just to highlight really that these wouldn't go in a gallery. So on your website, you wouldn't put them in your gallery because that's your work. But on a website, you might use them as a nice masthead or you might um, you know, use them on your social media. You might set a file up called trends or inspiration or ideas and you can pop them in there. And it's perfectly okay to be really clear about the fact that they're not your images, but you could just stay along the lines and being open and transparent and saying, oh, we absolutely love this wood panelling behind the shelf unit against the wallpaper, who else does? And that's one thing as well that with social media, if you ask questions in your post, that gets you more engagement and we'll come on to that in a little while. So again, I know we've covered quite a lot of content. We've got 15 minutes to go, which is good timing for social media. But if you do have any questions or comments, I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes now. If not, then we'll very quickly skip over onto social media and spend the rest of the time there because I know that's the thing that means the most for most people. Fiona, we do have a question in the chat area um, from what? Scott. Um, he just said, I have a Google business page account already, but can't work out how to get into edit it. It keeps trying to make me make a new page. Any ideas? Okay, so ha have you claimed the list in then there, Scott? You just type back in the chat. So sorry, if you follow the, I'll carry on anyway. If you follow the listing to claim the listing, um, you should have if you can actually log in so that you can see some certain areas then you can actually request um you can request google to send you a postcard to reset the listing if it's a bit more complex than that and it's that google's not recognizing the listing then again the google support function is really useful so i don't know if you've tried and not had any joy with them but if, if you haven't then they should be able to support you through because I haven't got the screen in front of me that you're looking at, I can't give the best advice on that one, unfortunately, Scott. But again, as I've said to everyone else, you're more than welcome to email me. You know, send me a screenshot of what you can see and I'll try and guide you through it. Or, if you know, if you email me and you just want a quick chat on the phone, I'll send you the number through and then we can do that. Hopefully that's OK. OK, so we're going to move over there and let's have a little look at social media. So. The main points for making it work for you is choosing the networks where your audience will be or you think your audience will be. And a lot of what I hear with social media, excuse me, is that, um, oh, well, I need to have an Instagram and I need a Pinterest and I need, actually, I need a Twitter as well and I need a LinkedIn and I need a Facebook. And I can understand why people feel that way because yeah, in an ideal world, if you had a full-time social media manager, you would have all these networks and you'd run them all beautifully. But being realistic about the time that you've got available, it for me is more important to choose the fewer networks that you can focus on well and post regularly instead of trying to have the kitchen sink of social media and a profile on every single network. Now, as a rule, I mean, Pinterest is brilliant for your business, but I can honestly say I'm on Pinterest all the time. I'm doing my house up at the minute, so I'm always looking for ideas, but I would never ever choose to buy or book a service-led trade from that network. That's a personal thing. 
and I know that some people do, but as a rule, Facebook would be where I would catch my eye. And I know the same for many people as well. LinkedIn, again, is good for commercial. If you want an Instagram, you want a Pinterest, you can do that. But if you just feel that you want to do a couple of networks and do them really nicely, or just one, if you've got one of those markets, then that's okay. Then what I always say to people is get really good at them and feel confident with it and spend your time on there and then add some more in. So don't ever feel under pressure to have every single network going because you're just, you're running a small business. You just don't have the time. So using a scheduler as we've discussed already will really really help you and the, again good imagery is key now we've talked about that regularly because it really is it's what's going to sell your your services so don't forget if you if the phone on your sorry the camera on your phone's not brilliant then definitely invest in a small digital camera because actually it's worth the investment when you know that you're going to book jobs on the back of the quality of your images but most smartphones are pretty good now and, and would have the right standard. Post regularly for maximum effect. We're going to use Hootsuite for that one to make it nice and easy for us and get into a routine which is sustainable for you and your business. And by that, I mean that if you know you have a quick 20 minutes in the morning before you leave and you've had your coffee and you're going on your job and that's the good time for you to reply, use that time and get into a routine. If that's a Sunday afternoon, get into a routine be realistic with the time that you've got. And if that's only going to be 20 minutes a week to reply back to people, if you can't rope someone in, then we have to accept that. But really the ideal is that you're going to be able to get someone in the family or in the business to help you out with this. But you've got to make it sustainable for the time and resource you've got available. So don't put pressure on yourself. I find so many people are in a social media block because Either they put something out and they can't cope with the volume of, of inquiries they get, or they don't put something out and then they're beating themselves up because they know. So that's half the battle is really just finding this routine. Again, if you decide that you want to use a scheduler like Hootsuite and you can put a few hours aside in one block once a month, I think that'll be a bit more manageable for you. Um, again, use paid advertising if you like. It will give you additional exposure. And encourage Facebook reviews from your happy customers just the same as you would with Google. So LinkedIn. Again, we've touched on LinkedIn. If you're out there sitting listening tonight and you only ever want to do domestic work and that's all you're focused on, then LinkedIn's not going to be for you. Really, I know that people are on there who have also got homes, but they're in their business working day. And, and if you're not trying to target commercial jobs, then don't worry about it. If you are trying to um, target commercial jobs, I mentioned this earlier, but what I would do is re really write a target hit list of businesses that in my area that I'd like to work with. And then go and engage them uh, by commenting on their profile, as in when they put posts out there, just be positive and happy. You don't have to try and sell your services, but just try and softly bring a relationship together that's not pushy, but actually they'll recognize the business name when you eventually a bit further down the line will come to have a sales conversation with them. So you can align your feed as something really useful for industry. So you can become what they call on LinkedIn, like a thought leader. And that's by sharing information about your industry. Now, whether that's trends in the in commercial um, decorating or whether that's the, um, the latest coronavirus information for people who go into, into businesses as trade, you can share. It doesn't always have to be your own content that you put out there. Use testimonials and reviews that you've got as a really nice way to build up some credibility without directly talking about your own services. And share, be humble on there. Show how excited you are that you had a nice, happy review from, from an, a previous commercial job. Because people buy people and being successful on LinkedIn is all about just being true to yourself and being a kind person and being nice on that and somebody that people would want to do business so i can't underestimate the relationship building for linkedin and that's what it's all about definitely share your accreditations on there to show that you uh, you know you've got that accolade and that you're qualified to work with them 
And again, I know I'm getting like a stuck record, but you schedule us again. And I just saw another question pop in, Laura. Have we got something else? Yeah, um, so Samantha again just asking Fiona, what are your thoughts on, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Hoost, Host, H O U Z Z. Oh, house. I'll tell you with that network that it's something that it's only really come to my mind um, quite recently, and that's mainly because I've been using it as a, as a, as a uh, homeowner who's doing improvements. It's really on the off. I think that it's. Um, there are a lot of businesses out there that are engaging with it previously more. I think it's a bit of a new kid on the block, but it seems to be having a lot of success with. It's got some good algorithms behind it, which means it ranks really well. And I know that a lot of the blogs and ideas and queries and questions that I, as a potential customer or a new, you know, a new um, a homeowner who's looking to get services, I really like it. So from the other side, I can't answer in terms of the nitty gritty of how it would work for you as a business but i can say if it's gonna if it, i like it as an audience then it could be a good place for you um to spend some time and um, i definitely think that it's worth the effort because it does seem to be everywhere at the moment it's come from the forefront so i really think that it's a uh, thumbs up genuinely i haven't got an opinion in terms of if there are any packages on there and whatnot because i'm an advisory who advises whole of market so for the sector but you know for home improvements i haven't got that familiarity with house but i would be more than willing to do some digging and have a little look at, at the commercial prospect for businesses and see if it would be um, worth you spending your time on so again if you want to pop me an email we'll have that chat and i'll do that bit of a recce for you if that's okay samantha I think have we got another one or is that the same we've got another one fiona um so uh, blinda just said we are redoing our website our website developer is a coder and does a great job but i feel it could look better would you mind having a look at it if i emailed it to you for some constructive criticism please a hundred percent it's one of my favorite parts of the job is to just check out and i say that with any marketing that you do i i can be neutralized in ears you know, generally I work with strategy businesses only, that's my patch, but I'm spending the time with you tonight that I want you to feel that you can come to me. I would more than be happy to be more than happy to look at that for you. I think it's a really difficult thing that I see a lot of coded built websites and what they don't always do is look at what we've talked about tonight and that customer journey and that user experience because they're more interested in how it works in the background. So definitely we can look at that together and see if we can uh, guide them on it a little bit more. So yeah, send it over. Okay. Fab. And we're going to quickly look at Facebook as well. So I like to set goals with my um, social media. Now you might be into that or not, but it's really useful sometimes. So if you're on 100 likes, let's say let's get to 300 likes. And if you're on that, let's say let's get to 500. And I sometimes think if you've got goals, whether that's your number of followers or whether that's conversion level for how how many inquiries do you get that you go out to quote so what's the conversion from inquiry to quotes what's the conversion from quote to work so these are really nice things that you probably already track as part of the business maybe not so formally but you can start to do that with your social media and always ask people how they heard about you and then you can track back to see which marketing works not going to cover all of these because we've talked them, talked about it a lot already but in your post it's really nice to tell people about your availability so if you're now booking jobs for october then be honest with that and say you know let's uh, get your home ready for christmas it's not too early to start putting these messages out if you're booking into october november then be, be clear about that on your post because actually it might fit in really nicely with some people they might think well We'll get the kids back to school and then we'll get it done and that'll fit in before before we um settle down for christmas so uh highlight again the services that you offer so if you're not interested in small jobs put that in your post if you want to put in that you you sort of deal prefer to deal with larger business uh, sorry larger jobs in the domestic market then definitely put that in there because you don't want to be wasting your time and their time on quotes that aren't right for you Again, if you like the smaller jobs because you find that you can pepper them in between the larger ones, but you don't want to get them all small, 
then you can control that by saying we've got spaces on x y and z dates for smaller jobs if anybody just wants something for example x y and z kitchen painted do the hall downstairs loo bathroom we've got space to fit these jobs in really quickly so you can start to manage your diary by directing your content and again, I know that I always bang on about schedulers, but what I'll also say as a caveat that don't always just rely on schedulers, because if you think back you did three Sundays ago, you whacked a load of content on, that's your generic content. It's not governed by what, where you are in this week. So if you're then spending time looking at your diary, don't necessarily use the schedulers to put that in because you don't know where you're going to be. So definitely keep posting live stuff like that on the network as you know it arises. Use your scheduler to put your baseline of content in there so that you know if you have one of those weeks or one of those days and you don't get the time that you've always got that baseline. And then as you want to control your social media and start to fill your diary up, you can then use your um, the Facebook network itself to pop that on instantly. Comment back in good time. It doesn't, you know, it's not rocket science. It's just courtesy. Now it might be really difficult for you, but if you're finding that struggle, just see if someone can help you out because it does leave a good impression. Um, and again, we've covered those points. So um, very, very quickly, uh, we are just going to take a look at Facebook advertising now. I'm quite aware that we, we're just coming up to the last minute, so we don't have much time for this, but I am going to stay on and run it because I know that there's going to be people on here who are interested. Um, if you feel that you, you, you know you're done now, because this will be the last piece that we'll cover, then definitely um, keep your eyes peeled because I know that Neil will be putting this web webinar and the slides out to the members if you want to get the content again um, I will, and my email address I'll very very quickly just pop that up for you so it's fiona.miller at staffordshirechambers.co.uk for those who are going to stick with us for another, it'll take about five minutes I think five ten minutes and then you can always ask them some more questions um, so Facebook advertising is really really valuable if you have got a domestic market and you don't feel that your social media works and you've tried organic posting but you don't get many likes or shares the reason i like it for small businesses is because you can put a small budget like three pounds a day and spend say 27 pound in a week and actually the amount of people that you will reach with this compared to what you would do without the spend is incredible facebook's not daft that's all i'll say so when you go into your Facebook page, you'll see at the top or in the more panel, you'll have what they call the ad center. Now, in order to do this, you'll just need to link a card up. Now, it's all verified and it's all really safe. I've got a few of my cards linked to different accounts. I've never heard of a problem with Facebook security, you know, but definitely read into that and check out if you're comfortable, because I know that not everybody will be. But if you want to use Facebook advertising, you need a bank card linked to it or a credit card. So when you go into the ad center, you'll see a screen like this. Now, I've not put anything on the chamber account, so you can see that that's blank. But just to give you an idea. And again, don't be frightened of it because Facebook advertising is aimed at small businesses. So they've made it really nice and easy to use. You'll sometimes see a button as well, it's key to mention. When you put a normal post out, an organic post that's not a paid advert, you'll sometimes see a button called Boost Post. Now you can use that, but if you bypass the ad center and just use the Boost Post, you don't get to see all the other things that you're able to use. And this is really good because there are all these different things that you do in the ad center. So you can use the Boost Post, or you can decide that you won't get more messages and the advert will be set up to send messages to Messenger. Or you can get more page likes by promoting the page. Or you can choose your geography and go out locally to, to people in your area. More subscribers or more web visitors and put a website link in. So if you go in the ad centre, you get to choose what you want to do. And now your goals, when you've done that lovely planning work that we looked at earlier, You'll know what you want to do. You'll know if you want a bigger audience on your page so that in the future when you do post, more people will see it. So you'll do a promote the page. You'll know if you've got a diary slot next Wednesday that you want filling up and you, you want to fill it up quickly and you haven't got anyone off the top of your head with a job small enough that you've already quoted for, do a boost post. Pop it out. Tell them that you're available. 
So if you start making friends with the ad center, you can really start drilling down and get your, um, get your Facebook working well for you. What you'll see when, so I just for an example here, I picked that I wanted to promote the business locally. And you'll see that if I clicked within a mile of our address that's registered with Facebook, it brought up 54,000 people. Now, I'm not going to hit those numbers if I am just using um, my organic posting. So you can imagine now that for just a few pounds a day, and I genuinely, I don't work for Facebook, I just really, really like it for small businesses. What you can do then on the right hand side is you can you can start targeting so you can change the age range the gender if you wanted to see you can put interest so people who are interested in home improvement that sort of thing you can really start to drill down in your targeting and what facebook does before you set spend a penny it will tell you how many people it thinks you're going to reach with that campaign and if it's going to be a good one and that's why it's so user friendly because you can do all of this without spending a penny and then you can decide if you want to do it um, again, if you click that you want to encourage people to send messages to you, it will give you this panel and then it will give you a nice preview so you can put an image in there and it comes up as an ad like that. Um, and then you can change the text as well and it will put a message button on and that's when you'll get messages on Messenger. So just a couple of examples there. Really, once you know what your goals are, and that's why that planning work we covered early doors is really crucial because when it comes to planning all this side of it, you'll know what you want to achieve, so you can use it to suit the business then. So, a bit of a roundup now. I like a chat, so I'm sorry that I've run a little bit over, but I wanted to make sure we could answer the questions as well. So, what have we covered tonight? We've had a big monster session and squeezed in a small space of time. We have looked at how you can um, spend any time that you spend on digital marketing, how that feeds into the customer journey and the footprint so you understand now uh, in more detail what we look for as customers. You've got the tools, so SWOT analysis and the um, 5W1H to make a marketing plan. You can sew those two together and that will really help you with your planning. We've covered the key elements for a website which really take away all the blousy uh, content out there what we need to have on a website and just shows us what we're looking for when we're on that customer journey and hopefully that you like the tools that we looked at um, and, and we'll be able to utilize them and you've got an overview really hopefully how to make social media work for your business including a bit of facebook advertising so find your feet with it get your confidence up um, we are going to um, round over, I'm just going to skip past that slightly for a second, but if you're really struggling or you want a bit more advice on something, ping me an email. Now, as we move forward and that becomes sort of more, more frequent, then what we might do is find your equivalent of me in your area, because as I say, I do work with strategy-based businesses because I'm government funded, that's just our area but more than happy for, you know, for a while to, to help you out based on what we've learned on this session and any follow-up that you need. So definitely ping me an email over. Um, I am going to stay on the session for a second now, so if anyone else wants to ask anything before we dip off, then please feel free to pop that in there and Laura will read out your question. For those who, of, of you who have, um, who have finalised that and they don't want to ask any more questions, thank you so, so much for joining us today. I know that your time's precious, I know that you're tired, I know that you work really hard. I really hope that what you've learned tonight or what you've had a refresher on is going to make you feel a little bit clearer about what you can do with your marketing and how you can move the business forward. So thank you so much for your time. And again, thank you to Neil of the Painting and Decorating Association CEO. Thanks for having me tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank Thanks you. to Laura, my glamorous assistant, and for Jane for setting everything up. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Fiona. That's been absolutely superb this evening. Thank you, Laura, for all the work behind the scenes. Um, to all you people who are still there, I'm not sure about you, but I think I, think I need to lie down now. It's, um, <laughs> it's been a fantastic evening, Fiona. I think you presented that very, very well. And I'm sure that the members will agree with me that you know, the, the younger people now have been more brought up with this sort of thing, Fiona. Maybe for a slightly older generation, it is a bit of a learning curve and it can sometimes seem a little bit scary. 
trying to learn all these things. As I said to you before in the conversation, the members are out there working, it's the summer, they're all busy, and trying to get your head around doing all these social media things or marketing, it can be scary at times. So hopefully in the future we may run another one of these courses. I would like to hear some feedback from the members either via email or call them at the office. And obviously Fiona, once we get the, um, the, the recording and the slides over, we can share those with members. So on behalf of the PDA, thank you Jane for the introduction and thank you for the Chamber. You've been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. And I think Laura, have we just got a question or chat popping in? Uh, yeah, so there is, it's not really um, a question, it's just um, Sam just giving a bit of advice probably um, to the rest of the attendees. So as Samantha's just said um, that they are on Hoost, and I apologise if I pronounce that wrong, and have received more inquiries from this platform for residential clients rather than Facebook or Instagram. So that might be just a little bit of um, a bit of a bit of experience talking sorry i i misinterpreted your um your comment or question earlier sam i thought that you were just asking my opinion for it but if you've got a story to share about it that's working for you that's absolutely amazing to hear um i'm definitely going to check out the business proposition and, and the opportunity a little bit more so that i can gem myself up for your sector um and it's it's great to see that it's working um it's amazing to find a network where you can have forums on there and blogs and, and, and ideas, you know, as a, as a potential consumer, but that's actually getting conversion for you because I really think that's what we lacked on Pinterest. So brilliant news. Thanks for sharing that with everybody. Um, and we will, um, if anybody, I think the spelling is H-O-U-Z-Z -Z off the top of my head. So um, for those members that haven't got that, definitely worth checking out. I'm going to check it out properly myself. So thank you, Samantha, for, for letting us know. If I can just say with that one, Fiona, I have actually got um, a Zoom call scheduled with House in the next couple of weeks. They've contacted the PDA about doing um, a partnership and a special deals for PDA Fantastic. members with House. So I have got a, a call scheduled uh, early early September with House. Obviously, we'll inform members as that progresses. That's absolutely brilliant news, Neil. And so everybody who's on the call tonight, definitely stay tuned. I'm sure that Neil will be sharing through the communications with, you know, this if that does progress any further and how that can support your business. So great news. And it just shows you, Neil, that as savvy as I think I am sometimes, there's always something that's moved forward and I've and I've um, not kept up to date with. And that's digital marketing. I'm living and breathing marketing day in, day out. I work 40 hours a week. I speak to Goodness knows how many businesses I run these types of things and it literally changes so regularly. It's That's a piece right. of thing to keep up with. Never mind somebody like yourself who are on the session right now who have got a full-time business to run as well. So every little bit that you do and chip away at, I really take my hat off to you. You're well done for spinning the plates. Okay. Have we got any more questions at all for Fiona while we're still online or we can... We can all go and get ourselves a, a coffee and uh, get some good uh, rest rest for this evening. Any more calls? <laughs> or Fiona, any more questions while we're all on there? We've, we've still got 23 people on there, uh, Fiona. So if there's any more questions before we disappear, that'd be great. If you don't have a question, you do have a little button that you can just click to leave the session. Um, if, you, if you can't see it on your screen, if you go on the three dots and click more, and then it's just leave at the bottom. So thanks everyone for joining us. Have a lovely rest of the evening. I hope your brain's not too frazzled. I'm going to stay a little while. I've seen another question popping up, so don't worry. I'm not going anywhere, but if you do want to leave the session, then just click those three dots to leave. Thanks, Fiona. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you giving up your evening. It's been fantastic. Is that a new one, Laura, or...? Just having a quick look now. Probably yeah. no thank yous yet. Just thank yous um, for the session. Oh. So, uh, uh, Roman, just thanking Catherine, thanking uh, Samantha, thanking and thanking um, as well. Uh, Belinda thanking us as well for the session. Um, so, just a lot of really nice, uh, good feedback, which is great. Great to hear that Absolutely. everybody did yeah. um, enjoy yeah. the session today. Thanks, everyone. You're more okay, than welcome. Okay, team. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the episode and stay safe, everyone. Okay. <laughs> See you soon. Cheers.
got to go up to you now. Oh, that one's from Des. There's one from Des saying, careful with house, they like to charge for everything. Well, we'll have a, we'll have a chat with them, Des, and see what they say. <laughs> the, it's the always got to the, be forearmed, isn't it? They're dealing with the Yorkshireman now. <laughs> so they, um, they won't get away with a lot with me, but believe me. But thank you for the comment, Des. <laughs> Tough cookie. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Okay, so uh, yeah, again, if you if you've got no further anything to add, if you just want to go to the three dots some more, um, I'm only saying that you're more than welcome to stay on. So we're just going to have a quick chat between the um, the four hosts, just to um, firm up how we're going to get the content over and that sort of thing. So. If you have um, got no further questions, then thanks ever so much for joining us. I just had a text from Mayor and Charlie saying thank you very much for a great oh. presentation. Yeah, fantastic, Fiona. Really enjoyed it. It came, cool, across, very, it came across very well, both of you. Thank you. And you know what? And I'll say that even if there's anyone still on the session, now, no matter how many of these exercises that I run, Neil, I can never ever get my time and bang on because I just don't stop talking. <laughs> Uh, I can time it perfectly to the hill for hours on end before we do it, but on the nice, I'm so in love with marketing, I just never shut up, as you can tell. Well, well you've, you've, done, you've done very well there, Fiona, tonight. Seven minutes I was over in the end, it's not too bad. No, you've done very, very well there. And we've got some nice, some nice, uh, some nice feedback there as well on all the... Uh... There's another one from May saying thank you. Watching tonight yeah. with Charlie. Ah, oh. right, yeah. Thanks oh. everyone. Um, also, uh, so what we'll do, Neil, now we've got the recording, we'll just get that edited down. That'll be with you by next week sometime. Okay, that's lovely, Fiona. Um, Thank you. I can get the slide deck over to you tomorrow. I'll just send you that as a PDF. So if you do want to um, upload it to the website or anything, yeah. um, all I would say is sometimes a slide deck without the commentary doesn't always stack up because it no, doesn't have I enough detail that. in. Yeah. So if you prefer to share the slide deck at the same time as the um, recording, then that's yeah, absolutely fine as well. That's fine. Good idea, Fiona. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. All right. I think we all deserve uh, half an hour, a cup of tea, and a bit of tally, don't we, before bedtime? Right, and right. Uh, okay. Friday. Thanks, everyone. At least we've got Friday. Take care, everyone. Well Thank done. you. Take thanks, care. Laura. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.